all my health students. This is the locust here. I miss all of you. But I thought that it would be fun for us to connect in some ways while you're home and staying safe and healthy, which you know is so important to me in making sure that you are safe and healthy. So let's get ourselves ready for our health class, shall we? Eyes focused. Ears listening. Brains turned on for learning. Voices off while I give directions. And caring about what you learn in health class because these are the things that help you to grow up. Yes, I expect you to put your hands up now. Hands up, please. Mrs. Baloka says it's time to focus. So as you can see, I have my table set. So one of the things we're going to be focusing on today is table manners. So what does that mean? Why is that important? Why is that part of health class? Well, let's think about this for a minute. What is health class for? Health class is to support the three facets of health. That means three different types of health that make up your whole person. That means physical health about your body. So we talk about and practice skills that have to do with nutrition and exercise and making good choices about what we put in our body because everything you put in your body is going to do one of two things. Help you to grow, you're in your growing years, or possibly hurt you or maybe not support your growth. The growth of your brain, the growth of your body. And we have to make sure that we're making good choices about that. Speaking of brain, the other kind of health is mental health. Mental health is how you feel about yourself in connection with the rest of the world. And this is a little bit stressful time right now. So I want to make sure that I'm reaching out to you to remind you to be mindful. And you might remember from our classes before that mindfulness is being in the present moment, calming yourself down, mind and body. So everybody take a deep breath. And as you exhale, feel just a bit more relaxed and centered so that you're able to be calm and listen and really understand what we're talking about. So take those little breaks for yourself when you're doing your schoolwork at home or if you just feel like you need to get outside for a couple of minutes, be mindful. Take a few breaths, put on some music, maybe do some doodling. We're gonna practice some of those things at another time in the next couple of weeks. And the third kind of health is social emotional health. That means how you interact with the rest of the world and how they interact with you. The feelings that you have and the way you display and portray them. And that's part of table manners. Table manners are important because it's something that you're going to have to practice throughout the rest of your life. It's not something just for little kids and it's not something just for grown-ups either. So everybody likes when other people are polite. When you're not polite, it makes the other people around you feel uncomfortable. So making other people feel comfortable around you because you have great manners is part of showing that you care about other people. It's showing that you're considerate and thoughtful and it also means that you care about yourself too. So that shows good self-esteem. So we're going to start with a story today about table manners. Table manners, a book about table manners. Now I'm gonna move our camera just a little bit closer so that you can see the pictures a little bit better. Table manners, a book about table manners written by Julia Cook illustrated by Anita Tufala. I am the table. So sit up close to me and listen to my table talk. I'll tell you how to be. Say yes to good manners. And there is our table. Having good table manners is a must if you want to be your best. I'll tell you what you need to know and I'll show you all the rest. Did you know that table manners really matter? They're more than just about eating. They're about being kind and considerate of others and being respectful of people's feelings. And these five children are holding the good book of table manners. It looks like they're all sitting up tall. Chairs are pushed in. You may be cute, important and smart, 
But know this for a fact. If you have bad table manners, people will notice and judge you by the way you act. Make sure your face and hands are clean before you sit down by me. I don't want to be the place where germs get spread. I want to be germ free. We've definitely, definitely had many lessons about being germ free, so making sure they're practicing good hygiene. Being a table makes me lucky. I get to be the place where people come together and enjoy talking face to face. Don't talk on your phone or text at the table. I've been waiting here all day. I can't wait for you to sit by me. I want to hear what you have to say. Mealtime is very special. You get to spend time with others. If your face is buried in a video game, you can't talk to one another. Please leave your video games in your room. Uh, put them right in here. People forgetting to talk to each other is one of my greatest fears. And this basket says devices in the basket at mealtime. So making sure your face isn't stuck inside of a device and you're looking up and being polite and respectful and paying attention to the people around you. You probably wait to see them all day and this is a special time for you to connect. When you sit down in your chair, don't hunch way down or lean way over your plate. Rest your forearms, not your elbows, on the table and do your best to sit up straight. If your mealtime is not a buffet, you sure don't want to be rude. Before you sit down and start to eat, wait till everyone has their food. So you don't want to be grabbing and reaching. That would not be polite. When someone puts food on your plate, say thank you and give it a try. If you say something like, that looks yucky, you might just make the cook cry. If the food tastes nasty, spit it out in a napkin. While you pretend to wipe your face, spitting out food in front of others will cause a big disgrace. And personally, I wouldn't recommend spitting your food out at all. Do your best to chew and swallow it and be polite as you can be. And please use your fork and pick up your food or your spoon whenever you can. Unless you're a baby, which none of you aren't, or you're eating finger foods, you should never eat with your hands. Don't stuff your mouth full of food or take too big of a bite. It looks gross <coughs> and you might choke. This bite looks just about right. If you try to talk when your mouth is full, you'll make a big mistake. People can't understand what you're saying. And you might spray someone with cake. Are you kidding me? Close that mouth. I don't want to see you chew, spit, and food together. It's gross to look at. Ew! And I don't want to hear you eat either, so please don't smack your lips or grunt and hum while you chew your food. People don't like that one bit. Eat slowly. Don't gobble your food. Enjoy your food. Your meal took time to prepare. Wait five seconds between each bite and show the cook how much you care. If you see something you want on the table, don't reach over somebody's plate. Ask for that item to be passed to you. It won't be that long of a wait. Don't use your sleeve to wipe off your mouth. Use your napkin instead. Place your napkin on your lap when it's not being used. Are you remembering all that I've said? Never blow your nose with your napkin or wipe off your entire face. Excuse yourself and go to the restroom and do that in the right place. Whenever you drink at the table, you must try hard not to slurp. And excuse yourself quickly if you have gas, because it's rude to toot and burp. If 
a gas bubble slips out by accident, make sure you say, excuse me. Gas bubbles at times can be very tricky. Don't you all agree? Just don't make a big deal of it. Say, excuse me and move on. Always thank the cook when you were done eating and ask to be excused. You'll find that meal time is a lot more fun when you act the way you should. I am the table and I know this stuff. These things I know for sure. Using good table manners is a must if you want to do well in this world. I know there's lots to remember, so let me tell you what I've found. You'll need to practice and be reminded a ton before you'll have it all down. So the next time you go to sit down at a table that's just like me, remember my table talk and be the best you can be. So we're going to review some table manners together. Table manners. Come to the table with a clean face and hands. Remember, Germs like to hang out on your hands. Water isn't going to get the germs off by itself. You need to use soap and water and then dry your hands off. So hope you're practicing that as well as your face. No devices at the table. That means anything that would be electronic, that wouldn't be something that would be allowed or be proper. I'm sorry. Place your napkin on your lap. That way if any food drops on it, you can have your napkin catch it instead of getting your clothes all dirty. Only begin eating when everyone else does. So don't just start gobbling up your food before your mom or your dad has a chance to sit down or your brother or sister. Wait till everybody's sitting down and then start eating together. That's the polite way to do that. Stay seated, sit up straight. So if you must leave the table for any reason, if you need to go to the restroom, you ask first. Ask politely and say, excuse me, and ask if you can leave. Always sit up straight, slouching down or putting your elbow on the table. That just kind of seems a little lazy. And this is a time we want to make sure that we're using our best posture and it just seems a little bit more polite and it, it makes people feel like you want to be there. Keep your elbows off the table. So sometimes you might do this. And that's not appropriate at dinner time. You want to make sure that your elbows are off the table and you're sitting up straight. Chew with your mouth closed. Nobody wants to see the food as you're chewing it. That wouldn't be polite either. Swallow your food before speaking. Whatever it is that you have to say can wait for those few seconds until you chew and swallow your food. And then you can speak and others can hear what you're saying without having to see what's in your mouth. Instead of reaching for something, like maybe bread in a bread basket or a ketchup for your food, make sure that you ask, please could you pass the ketchup? Do not stab or shovel your food. So when you're stabbing your food or shoveling your food, it's not the right way to be holding your utensils and it might make a lot of noise. So we're going to practice that a little bit too. Speak in a pleasant tone about appropriate topics in a reasonable volume. So you certainly wouldn't want to be screaming at the dinner table, nor do you want to not say anything at all. This is a time for you to get together and have some nice conversation, maybe about your day or about something great that happened or something you want to do or look forward to or listening to what's going on with other people in your family and making sure you're talking about things that would be appropriate at dinner. For example, if someone's bringing up something that maybe didn't seem like it was the right thing to have uh, to talk about at dinner. Maybe it was something that you found like maybe like a little gross. That's probably not what you want to be talking about at dinner. Talking about things that make everybody comfortable. These are all part of having good manners. So let's look a little bit more closely at our table. So when you come to the dinner table, you want to make sure that you have clean hands, and face. So let's just pretend that I've washed my hands. My hands are clean. I did just wash them. But at the sink, and if you can't do that, I hope that you have 
hand sanitizer now, which we're all being very diligent about using. We're using it all the time. And making sure your hands and face are clean. The next thing would be any devices. So if you have a phone or a gaming system, that you check that in somewhere that's not at the table. Maybe there's a basket on the counter and you want to put it down there. Next would be taking your napkin and putting it on your lap. You can unfold the napkin and then you place it right across your lap. So that way if any food drops, then it won't go onto your clothing. And you can pick this right up so it's handy if you need to wipe anything off of your mouth. Remember not to use this for wiping your nose though. If you need to do that, you ask to be excused and go get a tissue instead. So let's look at how this is set up. I don't know if you've noticed, but if you've ever gone to a restaurant, they might have more than one fork or more than one spoon. You might say, what am I supposed to use? You start from the outside. So the outside fork would be what you would use for your first course, like a salad. The next fork, which is usually bigger, is the one you use for your meal. And then sometimes it's a soup spoon and maybe a butter knife if you need it. Might need that, might not. And then you have your glass, which is on the right side. And you've got your plate. One of the rules here said, make sure that you're not stabbing or shoveling your food. Now what do we mean by that? If you're stabbing your food, it's going to make a sound against the plate and it's probably not good for the plate either. You could break it, you could scratch it, and it doesn't sound very pleasant to the ears. So you're making sure that you're just putting the food onto your fork as you need to, not with stabbing it. Shoveling the food would be like if you've got your elbow up in the air and you've got your thumb underneath it and you're shoveling the food into your mouth like this. Well, that's not appropriate either. So you wanna bring your elbow down and hold it almost like you hold a pencil. And then bring the spoon up to your mouth instead of bringing your face down to the plate. We're not dogs, we don't need to do that like a dog dish. And sitting up, and when you're done, you can place your utensils face down on the plate, that lets everybody know you're done. Now, if you ever go out to a restaurant and you have a waiter or a waitress come over to take your order, make sure you wait until it's your turn to order. Make sure you have good eye contact. We practice this a lot with our communicating with one another in health class. So eye contact and making sure that you're speaking loud and clear. Put a smile on your face and use your best manners. May I please have and whatever it is that you are ordering. May I please have the hamburger? Thank you. And saying thank you when you're done. So that's an appropriate way to order and making sure that you're using your manners as well in a restaurant. And don't just save the manners for special occasions like going out to a restaurant or a holiday at grandma's house. You should always be practicing good manners. Now, those good manners can really take you far. Think about it. You're sitting with friends in the cafeteria Think about the friends you sit with in the cafeteria. Don't you like it when they have good table manners? Maybe you notice they have clean hands. Or if they don't have clean hands, you might notice that too. You notice when they chew their food with their mouth closed. Or maybe you notice when they chew with their mouths open. Or maybe you notice when they burp or make loud noises. And that's probably not appropriate either. Or you might notice when they get up and down from their seats all the time. That doesn't make for a very peaceful lunch. So practicing your table manners is also being part of being a good friend in school. And it's also part of being respectful at home to your family members. And as you get older, it can show people how much you care, how confident you are, how considerate you are. Maybe at some point if you have to go to a meeting or a date or a business luncheon, you want to show people that you know how to behave in, in school, out of school, and in social situations. So this is a skill that's for life that you're going to be utilizing. We're going to follow up with an activity. I'm gonna stop the video here and restart it showing you what the activity is going to be.